if you're going to put American children second. Joseph Turner has a simple motto, American children first. He says it's the idea behind the ballot initiative he filed this week to keep undocumented immigrants from attending K-12 through public school. If you're going to give illegal aliens more, then you're going to give our children less. So if you really want what's best for American children, you should be standing up for American children and defending them. Turner, who lives in Torrance, is trying to push the initiative in the Ukaipa Cali Mesa Joint Unified School District because of the conservative makeup of the region. In addition to keeping undocumented children from attending public school, he also wants those students who are citizens but their parents came here illegally to be charged tuition. The child would have to enroll with a non resident tuition fee, similar to how we do with uh, our college system where we charge out of state tu uh, tuition to students who are not living in the state. No. Do I pay? My kids don't pay tuition to go to school, public school. I didn't pay tuition to go to public school. Why should they pay tuition to go to public school? Why? Because their parents may have come here undocumented? Parents we spoke with didn't agree with Turner's initiative, saying everyone has the right to a free public education. Of course it should be for free. I mean, it's free for anyone else. So why wouldn't it be free for, for them? I think it's not fair for the kids. That's the most important thing, that they should be able to be able to uh, learn, educate themselves, and go to school so they can make themselves better. A 1982 Supreme Court decision keeps schools from denying free public education to students based on their immigration status. The Ukaipa Cali Mesa School District says it did not have anything to do in crafting this proposal, and it will continue to educate students based on state and federal law. Donya Backus, Fox 11 News. Hey, welcome to the Punks for Progress weekly What the Fuck Report. I'm your host, Punker Mike, and this is our co-host, Aaron. Hey. What the fuck, bro? What the fuck was that video you just showed? <laughs> well, I got on the news this week. I uh, was at the grocery store doing a little shopping, and I noticed this reporter chit-chatting with uh, this little girl I saw running through the store. And I was loading my truck up, and uh, they finished up, and she came over and, and, and hit me up oh, okay. and, and asked me about this, um, this bill that's being introduced here. So she walked up, and she said, hey, aren't you Punker Mike from Punks <laughs> for Progress on YouTube, Facebook, and Punks the number four progress on the tweeters? She actually did say that. And she's like, I thought you sounded familiar. <laughs> can, I, <laughs> can I get your opinion? And I said, um, yeah, but I'll, I'll – you may not want it. <laughs> <laughs> so it was pretty cool. I had a couple of people locally saw it. Oh my god, I saw you on TV. Bitchin'. So there yeah. you are. Yeah, uh, that was pretty cool. Yeah, definitely. So and then, this is on the news. And yeah. then so, um but there's also other local news if we want to just go ahead and uh yeah. get into the shit. Yeah, sure. Um well t apparently today um there was a school shooting here in San Bernardino. Um, it looks like it was a murder-suicide. There were two adults killed, and then there were two children that are in critical condition. Um, the, ch the children were not targeted. It looks like it was um, the guy that did it walked in. Apparently, he was known by the school, signed himself in, apparently went into this classroom and shot, shot this lady, and then shot himself. And, and, a, and, and a couple of kids were collateral damage, I guess. So he said... Sounds like he tried to shoot at her numerous times before. I, I, it's hard to say. They're, and maybe, like, and maybe, and, and so to be. clarify, Michael, this is an elementary school, correct? This, yes, uh, yes, I make that clear. Yes, it was an elementary school here in San Bernardino. And um, I could pull up the name real quick. So a couple students were critically injured, but the 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 um the news report that I read um said that it they were not targeted. So, but yeah, another, uh, another, another shooting here in San Bernardino. Okay. But, uh, you, know, but you know guns. So, I mean, do, do you but have, you know well, guns. Yeah, I was going to say, do you have thoughts on it? Because, I mean, it's just, it's just, it's just ugly as hell, man. And, and you know, so you, 
I was hesitant, I guess, to ask the question, do we know the ethnicity of the, of the shooter? Uh, I'm not, I didn't read anything about the ethnicity of the shooter. Okay, no. so then I'm not going to make assumptions, but I think it's pretty obvious what my assumptions probably would be, that um, he has a, he's of lighter complexion, I would imagine, and, and um, <laughs> maybe not, maybe so, but I don't know. It's just the whole <laughs> uh they said uh this this report is saying here that they were in proximity to the female at the time of the incident that's how that's what that's what i just I, I don't know i i guess i guess ultimately i don't know that you and i can offer anything new to this discussion of um people walking into schools and fucking shooting people i mean it's all been said it's, it's gonna it's what it would it, it it's one more reason for fucking people to want to have armed guards at schools <laughs> yeah I, I, that's so rather than address guns from a um, societal position, Systemic. right? Um, let's just add more to the right. scenario. And <laughs> yeah. It's okay. So uh, moving on. Moving on. All right. So what happened in uh, North Carolina? Oh well, hey. So Monday, apparently, North Carolina repealed their bathroom bill. <laughs> you all know what the bathroom bill is. You know that you're yeah. supposed to go to the bathroom that corresponds with your uh, gender at birth. So, uh, so what the, the bathroom bill is, I just want to clarify, bro. What that is is um, the yeah. supreme the Supreme Court decided that um, to restrict um, same sex people from marrying was unconstitutional. So what happened is um, some Republicans got really super butt hurt because they couldn't be shitty to gay people anymore. So they decided to institute a bill that was shitty to gay people. And it created a, um, dialogue about a non-existent threat that no one had ever cared about or even thought about in history before the idea of tr where transgender people pee. Okay. This was not an issue in society. It started because they introduced this bill to Thank fucking gay people because they were allowed to get gay married. Okay? And and then there was all kinds of other fucking nefarious shit attached to that bill, too, about, like, um, uh, truckers and the amount of time that they spend on the road and, and, and not being able to limit oh, the amount yeah, of hours right. that they're on the road and shit. So there was a lot that was put in there so that, like, if liberals voted against the bill, they'd be fucking over truckers. It's a really nasty bill. And so... So what? So anyway, that's the North Carolina. Bill. Right. Well, um, apparently the NCAA um, had some pull in North Carolina because they came out and said, "Fuck you! Either repeal that bill, or we will never hold another tournament in your state ever again." Ha! Ah! All right, Michael. Listen, I am now going to uh, uh, <laughs> temporarily say it's okay that you keep cable news so that you can watch basketball. <laughs> For now, I'm okay with that. Well, I got to tell you, bro, my new cable channel has free speech TV, so I get Tom Hartman and and Stephanie Miller and Bill Press and Democracy Now like two, three times a day. So, excellent. Um. Anyway. So yeah. So so, so that happened. Double yeah. Ditto. That's badass. So they did it, and um, um, just excellent. That's that's humanity standing up for what's right, dude. So I'll give it up for the. Well, and the only other thing I wanted to add to that, bro, was that as I recall, there were other companies that were pulling out of North Carolina too. Like yeah, that, that was that was happening like from the start. There was all right. kinds of other um, like events and conventions and different things that were being canceled as a result of it. And uh, but what I, uh, what is the name of the tournament again? Because I'm so basketball it's, stupid. The NCAA March Madness. Right, so essentially the, the, the biggest event in college basketball. It, it definitely, and it, it's all month long, and, and it bleeds off into April. I think the finals are, are like the beginning of the month. I think the so, finals just happened. So the mechanisms of horrible capitalism were utilized against the capitalist who wanted to oppress the weaker amongst us. So bravo. <laughs> and, uh, uh, and well, so are we moving on? We are moving on. What is next on our agenda? Uh, what the what the fuck, fuck happened is in next? Paraguay, dude? What the fuck happened in Paraguay? I don't know. T talk to me. You talked okay. to Baldo? Yes, I did. So I just saw a quick, quick news clip on Democracy Now! And Amy was saying that um, that there was essentially a, an attempted coup in Paraguay, and that so the story was that I oh, that I yeah. saw was a sense that the um, the way I understood it from the Democracy Now! version um, was that uh, the 
leader of Paraguay wanted to secretly pass um, legislation that would do away with term limits, okay, and um, tried to do it in the middle of the night. People found out about it. They went down there and fucking set fire to their congressional building. Oh, shit. And there was a, like, armed fucking conflict, whatever, and some of the, the protesters were fucking killed. And, um, and that was kind of it. And I'm like, Wow. Wow. So I instantly text Baldo because not only, not just because he's from Paraguay, but because uh, but because he is uh, well in tune with what goes on in Paraguay and has a vested interest yeah, in what yeah. goes on in Paraguay. So yeah. at Future Kind, his nonprofit. Right. So, so for people who don't know, my friend Baldo, who plays guitar in my band, um, it, he also runs a nonprofit called Future Kind. And by the way, he just posted that um, he finished his uh, certification prog uh, program for the University of Nevada, Reno, uh, as uh, to run a nonprofit. So not only does he already have a nonprofit, he's certified from the University of Nevada to run a nonprofit. So he's a badass. And what his nonprofit well, does is it provides water purifiers yes. for schools and, and poor communities in Paraguay who are seriously, seriously suffering from a lack of uh, potable drinking water. And um, so check out our Punks for Progress show. We have Baldo as the uh, as the guest. He uh, talks all about that. It's, it's globalization future kind is the is the episode and it's from season one so please check it out and then anyway so um baldo knows what the fuck so i hit him up what the yeah. hell happened in paraguay bro and um so it's pretty close it's the same thing it's basically the, the congressional thing tried to push it through and it would benefit the president okay so that it wasn't really uh, um it, 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 the way democracy Now set, set it up, it almost sounded like there was like a military coup or something going on. And no, it's just they flipped the fuck out because their congressional body, whether it's a parliament or a congress, I'm not sure, but um, passed this thing. And then what Baldo's take on it is, bro, is, yeah, they freaked out and they had their temper tantrum, but it looks like it's still going to go through. <laughs> he, yeah. He's, he's going to have his term limits removed. So um, – I don't know. If we hear more about what's going on in Paraguay, we'll we'll share it with you on the uh, on an upcoming weekly What the Fuck report. So um, there's other international news, right? What the yes, fuck there happened? Is. Uh, with actually. China, China. Um, well, talk to me. He, um, uh, uh, the Orange Cheeto, met with um, the general. Secretary of the Chinese Communist Party this week, and apparently they met at the, the ironic part of it, I guess, is they met at Miralago, and the they this guy I, I can't pronounce his name, so I'm not even going to say who it is. We're going to just call him the Chinese dude. So um, he does not let his people golf. He thinks golf is a rich person sport, and that they shouldn't do it, and that it's 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 like outlawed in China. So it was kind and of I, ironic. And if I if I might comment on that just a little bit. Like, I agree with him completely, but he can go fuck himself because the Scottish invented golf. So, <laughs> just want to clarify, yes, it has been usurped by the disgusting elite of humanity. But, you know, anyway, just wanted to but throw in a little, a, little, a little bit of defense of my so, Scottish heritage. Ditto. <laughs> Our Scottish okay. heritage. Right, exactly. All right, go for it. Go ahead. Yeah, so that was pretty much it. He met, they got together and met this week. I didn't hear anything coming count that came out of it because of all the other chaos that was going on at the same time. So all we know is he just that he met with this dude. He met with a guy. Yeah. That's so far. That's. And, I he, just, and again, who was he? He was the, the uh, general was position, the general secretary of the Chinese communist party. He's head of oh, China. Okay. He's the, he's the, he's the head Chinese dude. Okay. So he met with the head Chinese dude, yeah. uh, dude, man, dude, I think is his name. And then G, uh, G, G Swan or something. It's like <laughs> X I Chang Swan. I, yeah, yeah. yeah, see, that's why I'm not even going to try. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so uh, what was it? Oh, but then he uh, did he not come out and say something afterwards or something? The, well, the, nothing. Uh, there was. I mean, he came out and well, he denounced. Uh, yeah, the, yeah. Well, see, what happened is, I guess he met with him on Thursday, and and the chemical weapon attack happened on Tuesday, and I believe it was Thursday night. That he launched those Tomahawk missiles, and then uh, after yeah. after after this Chinese dude boned out Friday, I guess he got back to China and said, "Yeah, it wasn't cool. We didn't like him doing that." <laughs> so he yeah, gonna, he didn't so, uh, he didn't yeah. say shit while he was here, but he said shit while he got yeah, when, yeah. you know he started talking shit once he got home. <laughs> A little cowardly run home and go, uh uh, uh -huh, <laughs> asshole. You know, yeah, but 
Yeah, yeah so because uh, it was fucked. And trust me, we're gonna get back to Syria. Don't worry yes. about. It. I know but it's we the, have the giant elephant we haven't mentioned yet, but we're trust me, we're gonna get to and it. And we have a couple things in front of Syria. Do yeah. we not? Um, so yes, we do. Next is. Uh, so we're that's fuck? enough international. That's enough about what the fuck happened internationally. Let's get into Bannon and the Security Council. Oh yeah, that happened this week. Yeah. So what the fuck was that about? Trump, I, I, re- Trump I, removes I, Bannon from the from the uh, National Security Council. Right, and and so and I think it's not that big of a deal. Okay, and I'll I'll explain. But um, let's. Let's back it up a little bit to you remember when he was added to the Security Council to begin with, right? Yeah, it was Every, kind of a shysty thing. He just kind of yeah, did it underneath everyone Trump. Everyone was like, yeah, behind Trump's back. Kind what of. the fuck are you putting him on the Security Council for? And it's not even like because his politics are wrong or because he's right wing. It's because he has no business. He he's a, he's a fucking like uh, he he's a podcast guy with a with a website. Right. What does he know about national security? He just has nothing to offer. Right. Well, so didn't like, he, yeah, but didn't he kind of sneak it in underneath Trump, like put it in an executive order or something, or Trump signed it without reading it and made him? Is that right? I had I, yeah, that. I think I think it was something like that. Like he, he didn't really know Trump was Trump didn't really know he was putting him on National Security Council. So my first thought was, oh well, now he's just fucking getting back at him. But apparently, there's some bullshit going on between him and Kushner. Him well, and right. Kushner and so are buttheads. Right, they don't like each other. And so let me just kind of say what my I, – obviously I don't know. My tinfoil on what's going down with Bannon and the Security Council is this, um, that he just um, – Trump kind of got a little glimpse. Like he, this man had no idea what he was doing when he took office. Okay, He, uh-huh. he, has, he had no under, real broad understanding of what it means to be the president and all the responsibilities it entailed. Oh, you and can I just, can, you can so my thinking is – he added Bannon to the Security Council so Bannon could hold his hand and explain to him what he was doing, what the Security Council is. You know what I'm saying? Kind of like, report back to him and go, hey, this is kind of hold his hand here. through it and walk him through it and explain it in fucking Trump language that, you know, dumb it down so Trump could understand. Oh, and wait, think, wait. With, with, with graphs and maps? <laughs> yes. On the, the one, on one, whittled down to one page with graphs and with maps. With graphs. Right? Lots of graphs and maps. So. And, and, I, and so I think that maybe like um, Trump is kind of realizing, okay, actually maybe I need Security Council people on the Security Council, you know, and so he's replacing him with a fucking massive tool bag warmonger piece of fuck, right? You, you know, who he added? I can't remember who he added. Do you remember? No. Okay, I don't remember either. But uh, but it's just it's someone who has the experience and qualifications to sit on a Security Council. But uh, he's a horrible monster, okay? That's what I remember. I just can't remember his name, right? And, you know, and he's far right wing, and my politics aren't right with him. But that's, so that's kind of my thinking of what happened with Bannon. And, um, but also I heard, and I don't know if this is actually true, that Rick Perry was added to the Security Council. Oh, my God. Right? I think they did, yes. Yes, okay. I think so I heard that, that kind of kicks out my theory that Donald Trump figured out the type of people you need on a Security Council. Because what the fuck does Rick Perry know about being on a Security what Council? What the fuck does he know about being on the Energy Council? Council or the energy, can't, the, Department yeah. of Energy. He couldn't remember the name when he wanted to get gut the, when he wanted to gut it. Right. Then about that he's now in charge. Of, so I, I there's just there is no rhyme or reason or making sense of what Donald Trump does, and you always have to remember that in critiquing his that's funny. Uh, his that's, policy position. That's funny because I heard a couple of commentators on the news this, this afternoon say the same thing. So he's like, it's hard to say when when the, you don't know what the president's going to say from day to day. Right. And when we get to Syria, you'll see that one of the um, options that you have to consider as a reality um, of what happened with this whole thing is literally just that Donald Trump's stupid. So we'll, we'll get to that. That's but, a prim- uh, that we, that's, that's just a, a prerequisite. I mean, that's just a given. Right. And, yeah. and that, I don't mean that to be silly, man. That is no. actually an option that you have to consider in so many of these things. Is there like nuance and chess, you know, a three-dimensional chess going on here? Or is it just he's really dumb and didn't know what he was doing? So anyway, we'll get well, to I, Yeah, it. yeah. The only other uh, thing I wanted to say about – Let's about, talk about – you wanted to talk about uh, Bannon I just think, and, and – Yeah, and Kushner. Kushner. Yeah, I just think that – well, one of the reasons is Kushner's uh, Jewish. And Bannon doesn't like Jewish people. The other thing is he's got Bannon and Kushner in there to help him shape policy. Bannon's the one that's shaping policy, and I think that's why he ended up on the Security Council, because he wanted to help shape the foreign policy for this administration. 
Yes, yes, of course. That's why and I think, fan, that's and, Bannon's motivation. And, and I think course, Kushner's Brilliant's doing it, too. kid in a candy too. shop. Bannon was kid in a candy no shit, shop right? on the Security Council. So, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, so, and I think I think Kushner is trying to do the same thing, but in a different way. I think that's where they're button heads. And I, I, I think that Bannon's racism is, is also – plays a small part in it, too. But – well, sure. And he so, absolutely and, doesn't know what he's going, doing, and that's why he has these guys in there right. doing exactly what you just said. They're figuring out what's going on. They're putting their spin on it, and then they're explaining it to him on one page with graphs and maps. Right. And then the other guy comes with his page of graphs and maps, and, and they're trying to get the ear of the president. And, now, and all of that, bro, obviously is how um, a White House works. That's how White House administrations work. There's always infighting. There's always people wrangling for their their philosophy and their political theory to get through to the president and whatever. So that, that that doesn't look like, oh, my God, everybody, look, there's divisions in the White House. Like, so what? There always is. OK, just they're, yeah, stu- they're so hardcore. stupid that we get to hear about all their bullshit, petty infighting. They, they just they because, again, they have absolutely no fucking idea what they're doing. They're figuring it out while they go. Okay, well, and they couldn't be the you know, more, there couldn't and be I'm not, a more and I'll tell you, Mike, I'm not disagreeing with any of uh, the scenario that you described. Of course, you know, I, I believe that Kushner and Bannon really fucking hate each other, and I believe Bannon hates Kushner because it's Jewish, and that makes um, Kushner go, "Well, fuck you, then, dickhead. You hate me because I'm Jewish. I hope you die." Okay, so obviously they're not going to like each other, man. You know, but like, so anyway, but but, God damn, that's the atmosphere in the White House, guys. That's yeah. You know, well, you know. And, and, so, and liberals so are playing it up, I, too, bro. What's that? Liberals are playing it up. Well, sure, sure. And, and, I, and I think that that's um, counterproductive to, to our long-term goals. You know what I mean? And so to, to try to make a big mountain out of nothing of, of Bannon being right. removed from Security Council, he's still going to have Trump's ear. He's still a significant figure in the White House. And get, you know, get a load of this. Now that he's off National Security Council, he – can really focus on a lot of domestic fucking draconian <gasps> terrifying things. And yeah, right? let, let so, Kushner uh, handle the yeah. foreign foreign shit, I guess. I don't know. Right. Right. And 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 then, you know, and then um it also gives Breitbart the opportunity to, to discredit Kushner who they and show that they're truly anti Semitic and, and that's what's been going on. Breitbart has really got fucking you know, of course, Breitbart's got Bannon's back and you know, and trying to slam and discredit Kushner and stuff. And it, you know, so of course liberals love watching all that go on. I don't. I don't give a shit. Let's move on to serious, important things. Like, for instance, um, shall we move on? Because what the fuck, dude? Don't let Syria distract you from the fact that they just subverted the Constitution and appointed Neil Gorsuch to be a fucking Supreme Court justice for life. We have this man for uh, conceivably at least 30 years. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I'm livid. I fucking – I tweeted – uh, Mitch McConnell. Did you? Oh, fuck yeah. And I got it, re- it got retweeted a couple times. <laughs> What'd you tell him? Fuck you, asshole. We're coming for your job. Good for you, dude. Big, full-on, big letters. Fuck you, asshole. We're coming for your job. And wow. then the, the article about how he's fucking ruined America. He's ruined democracy. He's destroyed democracy and ruined America. By, so, by... So- b- Mm. Well, Michael, let's let's recap. Get us up to speed on how we got to where we are with Neil Gorsuch, man. For real. Let's recap for our listeners, man. So, uh, Merrick Garland. Merrick Garland. So, what happened? 14 months ago, Scalia dies. The most right-wing, right-wing asshole on the court. So, he up and dies at a, a what is it, a hunting lodge or some shit? He was out shooting fucking animals and – or he went right. there. And, anyway – Right, and they so, killed him, or, or and George because Soros. It was, because well, what it was, happened is George Soros showed up and suffocated him in, <laughs> in, in his sleep. There of is the, almost that's almost a conspiracy, though. Infowars did push a big giant fucking Scalia oh was murdered, God. you know, in his sleep, fucking thing. Anyway, go ahead. So that was fourteen months ago. Yeah, and they said nah. And then Obama, gonna, yeah, and so Obama, as according to the Constitution, um. Picks a Supreme Court justice, Merrick Garland, and McConnell says, mm, "Fuck you, we're not going to give him. A, we're not even going to give him a hearing. The American people need to which speak. Is their constitutional we're going to wait until after the election." 
<laughs> it's like, what the fuck are you talking about? The American people have spoken twice. They picked Obama twice. And now, and now you're – I disagreed with the American people, by the way, but they did. The bottom line is they picked him. And he gets to he well, gets just, appoint somebody, and they have to see him, and that's I'm how it is laid words. out in the Constitution. And they have subverted the Constitution in democracy by not seeing Merrick Garland, and they did it for years and years – or not years and years, sorry, but months year. and months and months. And fucking um, – and then put this, like, Neil Gorsuch piece of shit up who, who fucking shit on autistic more, kids. More and right-wing I, and, than Scalia. And, 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 and more right-wing than Scalia. And I'll tell you what. Right now, because there's eight people on the on the Supreme Court, um, Gorsuch's attempt to fuck over autistic kids um, was shot down. But if he'd have been approved prior to that, like he's been approved now, and he was sitting on the Supreme Court, he would have made that five-four majority happen, and autistic kids would currently not be allowed to be treated as autistic kids in a fucking public school system. That's reality, man. But you know what? The fucking Republicans said, no, we're going to subvert the, our constitutional duty. Every single Republican and, and uh, you know what, man, maybe even Democrat in fucking Congress should be impeached because of what happened with Merrick Garland. But I digress. So they subvert the Constitution. Oh and then they God. put this guy up instead. Yes. He has no right to have ever even been uh, brought before a Senate. Well, did you hear? You, did you even, hear? I was going to say, did you hear what, what McConnell said? Well, I'm sure, but remind me. Um, he got up there and said that oh, yeah. the, the yeah, reason they had to do this is because it would be the first time in U.S. history that um, the Democrats – or that there has been a filibuster, uh, a partisan line filibuster. Well, that's not and bad. so, and to avoid that, that, and because, well, that. so he's basically blaming the Democrats. Well, because all the Democrats are going to filibuster, we have to do this. Well, okay, so I just want to back up again a little bit. Remember that Mitch McConnell said, what was it, his proudest moment in freaking public service history was denying Merrick Garland? Yep. Tearing. He's a fucking asshole. He's a but fucking asshole. His proudest moment. This is his own fucking word. His proudest moment as a fucking con or a senator, was subverting the Constitution blatantly. And then he comes out and says that shit as well. Yeah, well, we had to because, you know, the Democrats were going to filibuster. So, great. Now there's no reason. So he subverted – so we, we talked about this last week. We said that, of course, the Democrats would filibuster, and if they did filibuster, that the Republicans would subvert the Constitution and eliminate the – or subvert democracy and eliminate the filibuster. The, uh, the filibuster altogether in relation to senior uh, uh, Supreme Court justices, and you do know that, Mike. That right? Yes. That they've only the, they only employed the nuclear option in relation to nominating a Supreme Court justice. Yes, okay? but the so, Democrats already destroyed it to lo- to um, to get lower court justices in. So you know the Republicans and Democrats are all fucking traitors. You know, don't you know? It's not Republicans versus Democrats. That's nonsense. Well, the pro- uh, well, yeah, but the problem with that though, too, dude, is they were doing the same thing. They weren't letting any of Obama's um, lower court choices get a hearing or go through or be voted on. So they, I mean, it's like, come on, man, what are you, what are you going to do? I mean, and he's throwing up moderates. Not nobody we'd like to see. Nobody fucking right. far left at all. Right. Moderates Who was it that- to try to get to try to get the other side, the other right. party. Marlin, vote for him. Merrick Garland was a Republican uh, uh, suggestion to begin with, right? Wasn't he, he was. A, he was. A, he was remember. a corporatist. He, well, was, he de- was definitely but, moderate. But, but it was a, 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 a leader in the Republican Party. I can't remember the name. I don't who, think I don't. Who, who first suggested to Obama, "You should nominate Merrick Garland. We'll we'll back him. That's a guy we like too." So that's what Obama did. He took and the that's always... Republicans' advice. And gave them up Merrick Garland, and they said, no, the Constitution's a pile of shit. Go fuck yourself. Yeah, they, they wave the Constitution with every hand. Right. So, Both hands. So, you, you know, uh, Neil Gorsuch is your Supreme Court. We have a, a monster. A monster. And a, a, and a five fucking five to four majority. In, but he's good looking, and he, and, he, and he makes complete sentences, so he doesn't seem like a monster. 
Yeah, yeah, but but if, yeah, he's okay with a, a a worker dying in his fucking truck and freezing to death for some fucking beef. Dude, you know, and, and and the guy made the fucking delivery, and he made the delivery. Guy did his fucking job. He did his fucking job. He went back. He left got for fired. an hour and That's came okay. back you know, and made his fucking delivery, and they still fired him. Yep. That's and, good, see, and this just proves the. He, okay, here's how I see it. He's made these decisions down the line. So he's showing corporations, you can trust me, I will side with you every single time. Right? Every single time. Where does this $10 million of dark money come to get him fucking nominated? Because he just popped out of the woodwork. There was a lot of fucking dark money behind getting him nominated. Who do you think that came from? Corporations? Okay, so... What the fuck, right? What the fuck? And look, so now all of this stuff that we're talking about, Mike, I think is why what we're about to talk about now happened in the first place. I think the whole – it could be this whole Syria thing was all about diverting our attention from the last so- – everything we just talked to up, talked about up to this point, Right? Because you know what? Neil Gorsuch was fucking front and center, ground zero of the media's focus until Syria happened. You know, and, and it's not that, like, if they'd have stayed centrally focused on him, he wouldn't have been approved in, and made a Supreme Court justice. That's not what I'm saying. It was going to happen. Neil Gorsuch was going to be our Supreme Court Dude, justice. They that were was, going to employ the nuclear right, options. All right. We knew to. that. We knew that. But the point is... The media just instantly bought into when went right into this thing about Syria that, you know, it's just a given. It's just accepted as common fact that Assad used chemical weapons against his people last week. And he may well have, Michael, but we do not know that. And neither does anyone in the mainstream media. And no one has provided a conclusive source to say, yes, it was, in fact, Assad. And I'm not defending him. Um, I'm not saying he did or he didn't. I'm just saying that information does not exist as far as it, the public has been known or the media has been uh, well, come known. on, man. It could exist and they're not we telling know, us, whatever. But We know our CIA be- does, does scandalous shit. How do we know our CIA did fucking do it? I'm just saying. I thought, uh, that's, uh, that's a little far-fetched and that's actually not what I believe. But it's well, possible. Sir, but there's, uh, there's, come there's on, bro. There's myriad options. There's myriad options as to um, what, how that could have happened and who did it. So, Mike, why don't you do this, bro? Why don't you explain to us a little bit about Jenks theory from Young Turks, okay? <laughs> and then we'll use that as a platform for our further discussion, okay? And it's not necessarily sure. that Jenks got it right. Tell him what Jenks said. But he raises an interesting scenario. Right. And, so, um, let's, let's... and, and I, tend to, I tend to kind of agree with what he had to say because all along, the, the points that he brought up and being – Turkish and and knowing a lot about Turkey, which is right next door to Syria, um, I I I have a feeling and and him being in the business for twenty years, I, I, he's got a pretty good feeling for the way things are and how they run. So I, I was interested to hear him kind of go off on a tangent a little bit and um, and embrace uh, the tin hat conspiracy theory society. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. Jake, Jake, we've been waiting for you. Man. We've been waiting for you. We have a really weird looking tinfoil hat for you, man. It's, it's right here. It's, a, it's the Jank tinfoil hat. It's incredible. The Jank Huger it. tinfoil hat. Yeah, yeah. We've been waiting for you, buddy. Get on board. Okay. okay. Anyway, go ahead. So um, when the chemical attack first happened, um, we're, he was like, it's, it's something's weird. He's like, something's fishy. It doesn't make sense. And he explained why it didn't make sense. He's like, Assad's winning, and actually, if you've been following what's going on in Syria, he is winning. All those, all the, all the refugees are leaving because he's fucking bombing them. He's winning. He's got Iran on his side, and he's got Russia on his side. And well, I just want to clarify a little bit. We don't know. I just don't want to make that blanket statement that he's bombing all the people, and that's why the refugees are leaving. I just, just to clarify, that may well, be he's true, bombing and that's a bunch part of, of it. Well, that's part of it, but it's so much more complex than that. There's of course, a civil war going on. There's ISIS right. there. Russia's involved. The United States is involved. You've got these this weird thing called white helmets, whatever the fuck they are for well, real. Well, Russia wants to and, put their fucking you know, natural gas so, line pipeline through. Right, and and that's what you know Jimmy Dore talks about. So anyway, I. 
I, I'm not necessarily so, like saying you're wrong, Mike. I just wanted to clarify. It. Yeah, no worries. So, okay, so, so, so basically, so, yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, they're they're dropping barrel bombs on the people and stuff. But any, anyway, so there's a civil war going on. There's all this bullshit. Um. <sighs> so. When the gas thing he, happened. The when, gas attack happened. There's the gas, gas attack, attack happened. And he said, that's weird. It doesn't make sense. He's like, Assad's winning. He's got Iran and he's got Russia backing him. He's winning. He doesn't need to gas his own people. What the fuck is this about? And then two days later, Trump sends $1.5 million, 60 $1.5 million Tomahawk missiles into an air base, targeted airstrike into, into Syria. Um According to what the information they had, the or intelligence they had, this was the air base that they launched the chemical a strike, the chemical strike from. Was uh, conclusive evidence provided that planes were launched from that air base, or are they just saying planes were launched from that air base, so we're going to bomb it? Apparently, they have intelligence that planes were launched from that air base. Okay. Okay. All right. So now they, Russia. So in that the beginning, may or may not be true, but at least there's some validity to. And again, I don't think that. Say that even proving that they were launched from that airplane that necessarily proves it who it was. It, it's pretty damning evidence, I have to you know admit. Well, in the beginning, Assad, a thought. Assad, but again, said, no, I don't know I that do we've it. been provided with that evidence, so I have to remain skeptical, right? But that's a little right. better than no, 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 that's saying fine. you know saying intelligence reports prove is a little better than just saying it. You know what I mean? It doesn't any, – anyway. Which is the difference between perfect. saying Assad did it and it came from this place. We have intelligence to say they came from this place. Russia right. said um, it was a uh, an airstrike by the insurgents – or it was a strike on a, on a plant by the insurgents that had these chemicals in it. But those chemicals aren't dispersed when you blow up a plant like that, okay? They have to be dispersed from, like, an air bomb. So that they knew that was a lie. Um, Assad said he didn't do it. So – but then on Thursday, yeah, Trump goes in and, bl- and, and blows up this airbase. The idea was so they cannot use this airbase anymore to launch chemical weapon strikes. The very next fucking day, airplanes took off from that airbase. Okay. What the fuck? Yeah. So 60 times. And, 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 and wait, 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 wait. I'm going to let you go off on that. But I just want to back you up a little bit. Because was there not a conversation between the White House and the Kremlin. Oh Prior yeah, there was. Yeah, the yeah, let's, yeah, let's back it, that up. So, so not only did he, you know, ninety million dollars worth of weaponry, but he called Putin and said, "Hey, bro, I'm going to blow up this airbase." And and so, and then what does Putin do? He calls up Assad and says, "Hey, dude, move you guys out of there." Right. Trump's, Trump's going to blow up and, that airbase. And Putin so, like, six people. And, and, well, and Putin accordingly fucking um, gets his troops safe to safety. and Yeah, like six people died. Right. So so this idea that – uh, no, I don't want to get ahead. Go ahead, Michael. We're, we're good. Go ahead. What? I'll get, back, I'll get back to what my point was. Go ahead with what you were saying. So I'll just let you continue now. Well, I'm just – I mean, you know, so, yeah, he lobs these missiles over there. The fucking – they use the base the very next day. So what the fuck good was it? And on top of that, yeah, he doesn't tell Congress, but he calls Putin and lets him know. Oh, and apparently he called Assad and let him know. So, all right. Okay, so that so now, to what so now to yeah, so now yeah. what the fuck? This doesn't make any sense at all. So here's Jenks theory, all right? He has a feeling that, you know, obvi- there's, I mean, to me and you, I, I believe we know there's obvious um, c- collaboration between Trump and Putin. Well, right, and, but I want to clarify that a little bit. Um, there is obvious collaboration between the West and Putin. It's not, so I don't want to, like, whittle it down to, like, Trump and Putin are doing shit. It's just... The Western powers and the Eastern powers are intermingled in such complex ways that, I mean, we're, we're allies and enemies. We're massive frenemies, okay? And we're so intermingled on so many levels internationally with different trade deals and different – just it, a myriad um, in, per self-interests of the West and the East, many of which coincide and many of which clash. Okay, and of course Trump and Putin are part of that, and they're they're the figureheads of all of that. Okay, so so basically we believe. Basically, it looks like this is what it seems like, and this kind of makes sense to me. It's like okay, so Trump is losing approval ratings here. His approval ratings are in the fucking tank. 
right? He, fucking everything up because he's a dumbass. Lost in history. His administration is f- fucked up. It's he because they're fucking. They don't know what the fuck they're doing. They're completely unprofessional. I have no idea what they're fuck. What the fuck they're doing, right? So here's a way for Trump to get his approval ratings up to look like a fucking president for one time because all it takes is blowing something up for for a guy to look like a president, right? Right. right. Um. Then he can also say, which see, everybody's been calling for. Which see, I'm not in collusion. I've been watching for. Right. Everybody's I'm not, I'm not in collusion. Well, it, well, let me uh, hold on. Everyone has uh, uh, basically people have been going. All right, his approval ratings are in the tank. What's going to be? Who's he going to bomb to get the re- approval ratings up? Right. Well, boom. Syria falls in his lap. All you know, this gassing or this a chemical attack falls in his lap so conveniently at the time when everybody is going. Conveniently. What's his gonna? What's his fuck? Who's he gonna bomb to get his approval ratings up? Bing bang! It ha- This happens. Here we go. Well, it's, it's not uh, just that either, though. I mean, he this also he can say, well, now look, I'm not in in, in collusion with Russia. I fucking I'm, I I blew him up. I'm not in collusion right. with Putin. He's supporting Assad, and right. I and, and I, I just Assad air right. so You can't say I'm in collusion with Donald Trump or, or with, with with Putin. You can't say that, right? right? Well, they won't be able to say that, huh, Putin? He's like, yeah, Donald. They won't be able to say that. Yeah, we'll be big, right? We'll be huge. Yeah, we'll be huge, right? Yes. And then what does what does what does Putin get out of the deal? Ah, that's well, the other part of it. What does Putin get out of the deal? See, there was what do they call that word? Obama? What did he call it? Sanctions? Is that what Obama? Called yeah, it? they're gonna yeah. remove the sanctions and build the fucking pipeline. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And what did Jenk clarify a little bit about? Who's headed to Russia this week? Oh, yeah, Tillerson is on his way. Rex Tillerson. Tillerson is on his way to Russia. Oh, man, on his way to Russia. So let's see what's going to happen now. Hey, you know, well, you know, we moved that air base, so how about we just remove the sanctions, and now we're all good, and and now we're friendly again, and blah, blah, blah. Right. Right. Yeah. Oh, and then the other other little side note I saw is, um, you know who makes those Tomahawk missiles? I heard something about this, but I forget. Raytheon. Who... Uh, Donald Trump is invested in. That's right. <laughs> and whose stock went up right after the missile attack. <laughs> and, you know, he also, um, you know, he talked about he was <laughs> divesting from his, his businesses and he was going to give his brother, oh, you know, his sons the fucking control of his company and then check in after he was president. Well, he went in in the middle of the night and changed that wording and he can have access to anything and everything he wants within yep. all of his businesses. And they are continuing to build. New buildings, right? So, so the so the new fact towers, that they're... that uh, it, that um, Donald Trump is directly profiting from the use of those Tomahawk missiles is an impeachable offense, and Donald Trump can go right now and withdraw the money that he profited through his, his investment in Raytheon stock going up right now. He doesn't need the permission of his sons. He is not divested from his companies. No. He can go and and reap those benefits right now. That is a blatant conflict of interest, and it's a blatant violation of, I believe, the emollients clause, and it's impeachable. It's just a, a part of the long list. But he's not things. corrupt. He's not corrupt. Yeah, he's not corrupt. He's a good dude. He's a good dude. You know, little guy. Hillary you know? Clinton. She's, she's corrupt. Looking out for the little guy. She's corrupt. You know, that, that, okay, and here's the, okay, now here's the thing that all my anarchist friends are, like, all freaking pissed off about. All of a sudden, all the people who are like way against Trump and the establishment left, they're on board with this. They're happy that yep. he fucking did this yep. in Syria. Yep. Who Don't was uh, get that? Hillary Carrie. came out the afternoon before he did it and said that's what he should do. John Kerry came out and said it was a uh, a limited and and equal response or, or um, what's the word he used? Basically saying the same thing. It was you know it was. Um, the perfect type of response, basically. It wasn't, you know, starting a war, but it was like, hey, fuck you. You don't do – so I'm like, whatever. Ding, ding. Just, my, just you know, hey, 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 tinfoil, tinfoil. Uh, John Kerry is uh, George Bush's cousin. They're both alumni of the Skull and Bone Society. So, oh, you know, geez. he's a fucking scumbag. Fuck him. And, you know, whatever. That means nothing, though, I'm sure. But, I mean, I'm sure it's, just, that's, it's more – That's just me being no. a weird, paranoid conspiracy theorist. But that's real. They're cousins. But it's just they more proof that, right. that cool. he's establishment. Yeah, the know, establishment left. Or monger and fucking murder apologist. Piece of shit. Fuck I him. think Bernie was the only one that came out and said, no, that's fucking wrong. 
Well, good for him because sometimes he's not too fucking good on foreign policy. He can be a little warmongery. And uh, so good for him that he came out against it. But, you know, just so. Oh, God, dude. Yeah. It's such a mess, bro. Everything is such a mess. It has to, something has to freaking give some. I don't know, man. I don't know. This is so insane. This is so insane that all this is happening. You know, and so here's the thing, man. I, I want to recap this a little bit about the conspiracy theory and Jenks theory about Syria. Ultimately, what we're getting at. Is if this if this is true, if Jenk is right, it, it, he's ultimately saying that yeah. P- Putin purposefully gassed children and civilians, or uh, used chemical weapons on children and innocent people in Syria, so that to make it possible for Donald Trump to drop bombs on an unimportant airbase and do. Um, Minimal, if complete, ineffective damage to that air base <laughs> where people For died. For political in purposes. For political purposes, which people died as a direct now- fat bombing as well. And what what he gets out of, it, out of it is a little bit of bump in approval ratings. He gets to make a little bit of money. Putin gets his goddamn sanctions removed and gets to make billions on these fucking pipelines and shit. This is fucking is it, that so insanely the most corrupt thing I think America has ever experienced by far. Well, can you see – I can see him sitting there and going, well, you know, if we gas this little town, we'll kill less than 100 people. It's just collateral damage. Except, but you know, let, let's put aside all the women and children and civilians that America has admittedly bombed the shit out of in Syria up at uh, – uh, uh, to and still now, right before the Syrian fucking uh, yes. chemical attack, Don't we killed forget. what was uh, how, Obama how many, what, was was dropping bombs on him, bro. A week before the fucking Syrian chem, the recent chemical attack, we, we bombed fucking like two hundred civilians, and then bombed the fucking hospital where they were going to get the help they needed. But now we're pissed about. Did we bomb the hospital because I know the Russians bomb the hospital. Well, I, I could be a little wrong on some of those details, but America is not denying that we murdered a bunch of fucking civilians a week before this fucking uh, chemical attack. And also, you know what? We fucking use chemicals. Our our law enforcement use chemical fucking weapons on uh, native peaceful water, protesters, water protectors, water protectors in in um, in Dakota. Yeah, somebody tweeted that. I guess I don't have to worry about Syria and Russia coming bombing us because we use chemical weapons on on water protectors. And yeah. there was another one. They used another example. But yeah, it's hypocrisy, and the hypocrisy is just fucking amazing. I mean, and we talked about this a little before, and I think you had a point uh, when we talked about all his tweets from 2013, where he was yelling at Obama not to go into Syria, not to bomb right. Syria, right. and right. and and just showing how the and it doesn't do any good to keep posting all that shit to show his hypocrisy. We know he fucking lies, right? He, we yeah, know yeah, he yeah. lies, and we knows he we know he's stupid. So totally. c- to continue to point that out is anti productive. Well, okay, yes, and and I agree, and that was my observation. It's been kind of it's just a little pet peeve, I guess it's kind of been eaten at me recently, and and here's why I want to clarify that a little bit. I think it's important that when he makes a move that directly um, uh, uh, conflicts with something he's previously said, right? If it directly contradicts something he's previously tweeted or something, we need to know that. Like uh, the the news media needs to go, okay, Trump did this today, but three days ago he actually tweeted the exact opposite of what he did today. We need to know that. But us as just kind of citizens and stuff, as we incessantly like retweeting or reposting that he's a hypocrite it, it doesn't really do much to help our cause and i'll tell you this to my liberal friends um donald trump doesn't feel like he got gotcha when you do that his response when you go hey donald trump you're a fucking hypocrite you said this yesterday his response is i know dumbass fuck you i'm a liar and a hypocrite suck it he's like so fucking what what are you gonna right. do about it what are you going to do? I, I just, I just made $10 million And my approval right now. ratings went up, and I made money. Go fucking suck it. Right. I wish you were at the airfield and you got bombed. Go fucking suck it. So so that's just – I'm not necessarily trying to be too overly critical of my liberal friends. I'm just – it's just, I guess a, it's an observation I had, 
and that uh, Mike has obviously observed it too, that it just kind of doesn't help our cause. Focus on something like legitimate and real, real significant. Let, learn more about Sir, Syria instead of reposting that Donald Trump's a hypocrite. We all know he is. He knows he is. Everybody knows he is. That's a given. We, we yeah. already start with that. That start. That's that is right. on the base. He's a right. dumbass, and right. and he's a liar, right. and he's a fucking hypocrite. Right. right. Which totally brings me to what I. I, I and he uh, doesn't fucking care. It totally brings me to what I alluded to earlier. I was going to say that you always have to have that on the table as the option of what might happen. So when. when uh, uh, Mikey, when you first told me about uh, Jenks' theory, I hadn't I hadn't seen the 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 uh, um, clip yet from Young Turk. So, right, um, right. but my instant response was, I don't know, Mike, because it might just be he's a fucking moron. He it might be, and I still think this might be a possibility. I'm leaning more towards Jenks' theory, but I think this might be a possibility too. Is that um, in Donald Trump's little um, echo chamber bubble, he saw the gas attack in Syria. And went, I can fuck that. That's that's an affront to me. Like he got personally offended because it was a threat to his hugeness and his strength. So he had to show him, I can be strong, and 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 I'm gonna go bomb him. Hey guys, where should I bomb him? <laughs> like, not in any retaliation for like human dignity and justice for those beautiful babies he talked about. He didn't give a fuck about beautiful babies. Okay. No, but, if he gave a fuck, he'd have done something about the ones that were washing up on the beaches of the Mediterranean. Right, and he wouldn't have been fucking coming out against the, the refugee. Okay? Oh, maybe so, he would let the refugees in. Right, because no if he'd have let them in, they wouldn't be the dead fucking beautiful babies he's so concerned about to begin with. No, they'd be the live beautiful babies living here in America and hopefully right. get, getting the American dream that we can't ever have anymore. Right. <laughs> so if you're against fucking letting in refugees... And now you're a, a for what Donald Trump just did in Syria. Go f- fucking die. Go fucking jump off a cliff. <laughs> Fuck you. You're a waste of fucking human flesh. Fuck off. You're so disgusting. I can't even fucking stand myself. I'm going to poke myself in the eye with a spoon. You suck so much. Fuck you. Oh my God. And it just makes me sick, man. It makes me sick, dude. You know what, Mike? Listen. Uh, yeah, I know I just went off, okay? But if you really remember what really started us down this road, which led to starting the Punks for Bernie Facebook page, which led to us doing a podcast, was I was freaking the fuck out because people were being insensitive and saying we don't need – we can't let refugees in. That's the thing that set me off to begin with, bro. That's what I got freaked the fuck out over with humanity. How, why is, why are, why is there anyone, why is there any element or part of humanity that is saying fuck refugees? I couldn't get my mind around it. It freaked me the fuck out. You remember that, right? Yeah, yeah, I totally do. Yeah. And, and you know, and now here we no, are. I, I got mine. Fuck them. Right. It's this whole attitude. And now you want to have compassion for them? And we have to retaliate and go bomb Syria because you're so, you know, somebody's so butt hurt because of the beautiful babies that are dead. They're dead because of you, you fuck. Because you were against letting them come here and be free and safe from that fucking onslaught of misery and death. It's your fault. If you said no fucking refugees, it's your fault those children died. And that's why I say such harsh, harsh things about you. Unapologetically, Mike. You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah. I'm sickened by so many elements. Well, it's the truth. I mean, I, I, if you humanity. fucking cared, you would let them, you would, please, come to our country. Right. You'd let them in. And you don't. You don't care. Why? Because you're afraid that some, one of them might be a terrorist? Do your fucking homework, man. God damn. Wow, dude. So, uh, what the fuck? We went yeah. off. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that was another weekly what the fuck report, bro. I like it. I do too. Yeah, and um, so stay tuned to Punks for Progress uh, with the Tony Show we've been talking about. I promise it's coming up. We're working on it. It's going to be up soon. It's incredibly good. And um, make sure to uh, you know subscribe to our YouTube channel, like and share our Facebook page, hit us up on the tweeters. Punks the number four progress. And uh, but fuck, I love you, bro. I love you too, man. Cool. Peace out, guys. Bye.